Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Dean Zimmerman, editor of Stranger Things. It's so nice to see you, Dean. Um, you know, you. we had to wait a little bit extra for the season four finale of Stranger Things. We did. But boy, was it worth it. Uh, you made it worth the wait. Uh, I think, you know, the piggyback is by far the longest episode in the series. I know you considered this kind of, a, you know, a giant movie, but yes. what was your reaction when you just saw, like, truly how much was involved in this one single episode? Well, I was kind of wondering why I was doing a feature film in the time it would take me to do a television episode. So that was the biggest hurdle I think I had to do. <laughs> That and the fact that there were 300 scenes and the script was double the length of any other script uh, in, in Stranger Things history. Um, little daunting to say the least. Um, definitely a challenge, but again, uh, you know, it, it turned out amazing. And, and what we were able to do in, in such a short amount of time uh, and not have to sacrifice, you know, uh, quality of story or or visual effects or a, a, anything like that was a triumph in itself and uh, definitely one of the hardest things we've ever all have ever had to do. Mm. And, and I kept, you know, I, I rewatched the episode recently and I was thinking like Stranger Things always has multiple storylines, right? Because there's an epic yes. story going on. But this one, every sequence, it seems, is cutting between all these different storylines. So it's just like, did you have to yes. kind of chunk, chunk those and say these all have to feel different because the, it's constantly well, switching and, back and that and was forth. the biggest challenge, right? Is braiding all these different storylines. And, and they're not just like, oh, it's a dialogue scene. No, no, it's like, oh, we're fighting this and we're fighting this. And it's, it's crazy. And we're, oh, we're transitioning from real world to upside down. Like, there's just, it was so massive. And on top of that, oh, by the way, guys, we're going to throw in a four minute Metallica video. And oh, wait, on top of that, we're going to, you know, I mean, we're going to have the whole rift open up in the Hawkins and destroy the whole city. Like, it's just as much as you could have thrown complexity wise at this one episode. It, it really, like I said, it, it, we were doing feature level stuff. I mean, that was a two plus hour feature that we did um, in such a short amount of time. And, and the fact that we pulled it off is a miracle. Um, and the fact that we didn't sacrifice anything is even a bigger miracle. So um, we're ve I'm very proud of, of it. I couldn't have done it without, you know, uh, Kat Naran, who, who helped co-cut co it with me, and, mm -hmm. and Casey Saihockey, who we moved up to additional editor because we just needed that support. Um, you know, and and the one thing I will say in in just having that episode is a lot, right? But that is coming off of doing eight episodes prior, right? Uh, not in a vacuum, <laughs> right? It's not in a vacuum. It, it really isn't. You're you're having to do all of this almost simultaneously, really, and um, and feeding the visual effects machine that was really so broken, not because of our team, but because of the pipeline, like just just the logistics of COVID that happened, unfortunately, um, we really fell behind the eight ball as everyone did. And everyone got so busy. We were going to vendors saying, can you do this work? And they were like, no, we we, we can't. And we're like, we'll, we'll pay you some more. And they were literally like, it isn't about money. Like we just don't have the personnel and we cannot guarantee we can deliver the quality you want on the timeline that you have. So uh, you know, huge props to our visual effects team who literally pulled a rabbit out of a hat. There's mm. there's no question and deserve all the credit for how amazing the visual effects look. Um, and again, we, you know, season or episode nine had as many visual effects in, in that one episode that all of season three did. Wow. So you know, it, it was just, you know, 1200 visual effects shots. It's like, and when I say visual effects shots, like full CG visual effects shots, like characters, interaction. Like it was, like I said, we were doing feature quality visual effects uh, on a TV show. Yeah. 
It's an immense uh, amount of work, so hats off to you. Uh, one of those things you talked about braiding the different stories, yeah. and it does the episode does kind of start off with, you know, a structure that's introduced to the audience of the kids have this like three phase plan to take yes. down Vecna. When the audience is given that, you know, expectation of a structure, how do you kind of, as the editor, get to play with that? Do you play with audience expectations then when when there is that set? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, it, it's, again, with with how how big the episode was, one of the hardest challenges for me was, again, making sure that the audience was engaged enough in each phase as to not burn out, right? Like, oh, okay, well, well let's, let's get to phase two. Like, I... For me, I try to do it as like, I never want to be sitting there going, okay, when is phase two gonna happen? Because maybe something better is gonna like, or something, you know what I mean? Like, right. so it's keeping that audience entertained enough to engage what we need to push into the story, but then also um, keep it moving at a certain pace, but then also have to have those moments of levity and, you know, like where, you know, uh, Lucas and Sam, uh, or, and uh, Max are, writing their little notes in in Vecna's house where they can't speak to each other and kind of reconnecting after a fight. Like those are the moments that you need to be able to have. And it's how you cut things around it to make those moments land and work. Um, and so that's always the, you know, that kind of threading the needle that you have to do. The problem with 409 is it was so long that you had to do that all the time. Where in in a more of a compressed, you know, 45, 48 minute or 55 minute episode, it's a little easier because you can kind of navigate and speed up and slow down where you need to, to kind of create that, you know, so you don't get exhaustion from the audience. But to carry a two and a half hour and keep people riveted and on the edge of their seat is definitely a feat in itself, for sure. Yeah. Well, one of those riveting moments, I think, was one you mentioned a little bit earlier with the Metallica moment, oh, Master God. of Puppets, which is a, it's an epic uh, moment it's in there incredible. when he's playing it. How does that kind of, when you have music involved, an iconic piece of music, how does that affect your pacing and your work? Well, so this is, and I'm so happy you asked that question because it's, it's, when you look at it, you're like, oh, it was, it's amazing and that was a great sequence. It is legit the hardest thing to cut because if you have to think about, so the way it's written is there are certain moments, right? That have to happen at certain points in time. The Duffers wanted the vocals to come in right when Vecna was coming down the stairs and Max turns around and sees her, right? But prior to that, the intro isn't that long, right? So, I mean, so... But I also had to have Bats hearing Eddie and them start the music, fly off the roof, then have the, you know, the 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 Nancy and and John and uh, and Eddie and Robin and Steve see the bats leave so they can go into the house. Like there's all these moments, and you're talking about CG that didn't exist when I was cutting this. So it's me going, okay, they're flying, okay that's long enough, right? Like that's literally how I'm doing it. And then we would get the visual effects and it was way slower. And I'm like, uh, uh, I can't, you guys, this is all cut to tiny of a song that I already had to double the opening of to be able to make certain things land. So it is definitely by far the hardest thing to cut. That montage took forever to do. Um, but once we had it all, then it was really a dance with visual effects and getting them to kind of work within my timings. Um, and then there was a part where they needed to like open up a little bit and just because they weren't going to be able to fit the animation in the window that I had provided. So it's all about that kind of del when you slide, when you open up one thing and everything else has to kind of slide mm -hmm. and you either have to trim down or it's. So we did all that and, and it worked, but that was definitely a very difficult piece to do, um, as was the never ending story in season three. You know, I mean, it was definitely one of those ones where you just, but that's an attribute to our team and, and the team that we've established through the history of the, the, the show 
um, you're working with visual effects and sound and music and editorial uh, harmoniously so that it's it's all integrated and you're all working together and you're helping each other. And so I'll have music, I'll say to music, I need a little more here. Can I get some more? And they said, yes, but that may affect this. Can you give me a little more here or take away a little? So it's all about that kind of back and forth with all the different departments to make that sequence. So it's, um, and it's all obviously time consuming on a schedule that you don't have time to do that kind of stuff. So um, like I said, the it, it, without the team that we had, we definitely couldn't have done it um, and definitely couldn't have done it as well as we we pulled it off. Yeah, almost sounds like you're the conductor of an orchestra in a way for, for those. There is no question. I mean, listen, um, and, and a conductor is nothing without their orchestra and I'm nothing. And the same with the Duffers, like we're just... And so when the Duffers saw it, they're like, can we do this? And I'm like, yeah, but that's going to, and once they understood what the ripple effects were, it was one of those things where they're like, they, they, they were like, oh my God, this is so much more complex than we thought it was in our head. Right. And that's kind of the whole thing. And when they saw, ultimately when it was all done, they were, nobody's going to understand what actually went into making that sequence happen. Um, and, and the, the time and, and patience it took to get to have all the beats exactly land how the Duffers originally wrote mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, but those are the kind of those challenging moments that kind of make you go, wow, I, you know, it, you really can push yourself beyond what you think you can do. Mm. You know, I also wanted to, to mention towards the end of the episode, the kind of final showdown, everything with Vecna is so unrelenting. I was yes. watching it and, you know, even, you know, I think this recent time was maybe my third or fourth time watching the episode, but there's, you know, a triumphant victory, but then you can't even recover from that because people are dying. And then the upside down rips through Hawkins and it just keeps going. And you, it's almost like I couldn't breathe, you know, through yes. that whole sequence. Well, and How that's... long does it take to get to that point? Well, you? that's it. And, and, and it's interesting you're, you're saying relent, relentless right because it really was and my biggest fear is i call it like you know set fatigue or or, or you know it, it, or or um uh um oh my god it's gonna come to me in a second um uh set piece fatigue that's really mm -hmm. what it is it's like can you have all these things happening and the audience is like enough already right and so that was my biggest concern. And so that was really the hardest part of that whole thing is making sure that we can, that the audience is not only ready for it, but they actually need it. And so that was all done prior into the setup of it all. Um, and then once all the dust settles, can we have those big emotional moments, you know, Eddie dying, the reunification of, of all the families post the the destruction and all that kind of stuff. Um, those are the kind of things that you don't know until you've put it all together and you watch it and go, okay, we're good, or this is where we need to attack and try to figure out and make work a little bit more. Um, the one thing I will say is, and I've said it so many times, but it's really, I, I've never ever worked with writers, showrunner, producers, directors, like the Duffer Brothers, the way that they write and how they write the scripts is literally how it's translated to the screen. Um, we very rarely deviate. They'll let me take a lot of creative license with performance and stuff, but um, as far as structurally how it's written is is really how it, it is. And it's, it's a big tribute. Like they spend so much time really honing that and perfecting it. Um, and it's not for me to rewrite and, and because it's not in trouble. And so that's one of those, like their superpowers is the way that they write is just, it's virtually, I, I, I've yet to read anything else that has been written and like every single word that's written is in the show. Normally you have so much stuff on the cutting room floor or whatever. It's so rare in, in, in the Duffer scripts that, we lose or, or eliminate anything we may trim down some stuff but at the end of the day they are just they know 
exactly how to hit these moments. And, and it, it, it's really just a tribute to them. So they the blueprint that they lay out is just phenomenal. And without it, like this show would be way 10 times harder to do. Um, it, listen, it's, it's very difficult because like, again, you have to remember season four was almost double the length of season three. You know, season three came in under eight hours of content. This yeah. one was over 12 and a half hours of, of content. So, uh, and, and essentially in the same window. So um, we almost had to do double the work this season, which was um, a feat in itself. But again, our team is what makes um, everything possible. And without them, we're nothing. But um, uh, it's also the Duffers, you know, knowing what they want, knowing how they want it done. Me knowing them so personally now that it's really just kind of a turnkey thing. So um, we've definitely created a, a really nice family uh, with this with this series. Amazing. Well, yep. Dean, thank you so much as always. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's always to talk such a you. pleasure to see you. Thank you. And I'll be in New York. Watching. You should definitely hook up or something. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Everyone who's out there, subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep up with us yes, and stay tuned for Stranger Things, the final season. Dean, thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.